Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta. Such is the nature of life that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. You are that opportunity and so am I and so it is. Whoever you are, whatever path brought you here today, please know that you are welcome and celebrated. We know who you are. You are an individualized expression of the divine life in which we all live. We are life's opportunity to be someone unique and wonderful, whatever your ethnic background, religious affiliation, however you know yourself or describe yourself, your pronouns or gender identities. We are glad you're joining us here today. You are welcome to be a part of this community in whatever way serves you. And we are a strong, open, globally connected community centered on the clarity of principle through teaching and service and practice. And we create a safe and respectful environment that supports healthy spiritual growth. And now I'd like to share with you our declaration of principles as presented briefly by Ernest Holmes. A few of the declaration of principles we live by. I believe in one God, one absolute power and first cause to all things, I believe that this power is perfect love, and it creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative, and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life, and the immortality of the individual soul forever unfolding. I believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. So it is. And today, um, we've got a practitioner who is, uh, what a practitioner is, is someone who has demonstrated the ability to use spiritual practice and spiritual laws to bring about changes in their lives. And they've demonstrated they know how to bring about changes in others when asked. Licensed by Centers for Spiritual Living, they're available to you to provide spiritual guidance and support in those areas where you're looking for assistance. You may contact them through our website, cslmidtown.org. Today, we have one of our wonderful practitioners to share with us good ideas and affirmative prayer called the spiritual mind treatment, Maya Fuller. Welcome, Maya. Thank you, Vance. Good morning, CSL Midtown family. This spiritual journey we're on, it's ever unfolding, isn't it? No matter how long, We've been walking this path, there's always another layer to uncover, another way to grow. Because let's be real, no one has it all together. Even Jesus had to retreat to the mountains to pray and reconnect with spirit and recharge his heart. Here in New Thought at Center for Spiritual Living, we're ministers, practitioners, teachers, congregation members, individuals using these teachings to better ourselves and our lives. But let's face it, we're all works in progress. That's why we're here, to listen to inspiring messages, to be in community with people who are committed to being their best selves, and to use these teachings to navigate the complexities of life. Our theme this week is Hearts Ablaze. It's about letting the fire of infinite love blaze in our hearts. About reigniting that divine spark within us that fuels joy, love, and alignment with spirit. And this isn't just something we know in our heads. It's something we feel deeply in our hearts. It's love that inspires action, fuels hope, and reignites our spirits when life feels challenging. This truth became very real for me during my recent trip to the Bahamas. My extended family, after a year of risk and division, came together to elect a new board chairman and leadership team. Similar to what we just experienced in the Bahamas. The election process wasn't easy. It was heated and emotional. But the unifying platform of the new of the new administration 
brought love and joy and peace and harmony to our to our group. It was like the miracle that we had been looking for in the States happened after a similar kind of contentious experience. But at the same time, during that experience, I also had a more nuclear family, traditional nuclear family experience where I wasn't my best self in terms of being the love and kindness and patience that I wanted to be. Similar to many people who might be experiencing coming together with family members uh, during the holiday se season or choosing not to come together with family members during the holiday season. I have this one family member and we get under each other's skin. And despite the fact that the love of family had me come every morning and love of, of this family member had me come every morning reset myself to say, okay, I'm going to do better. Day, every, every day I, I failed and I found myself reacting in ways that I would say are not becoming of uh, the woman that I want to be, whether it be as a practitioner or a leader, but as, just as a person who practices these principles and lives my life in this way, that's not how I want to be. So I experienced failure in, in that regard. But my heart is ablaze with this teaching. My heart is ablaze with the spirit of God in me. And that led me to continue to come back, to continue to forgive myself. What did Jesus say? To forgive ourselves 70 times seven, right? Or, or to forgive 70 times seven. And we know that forgiveness starts with forgiving ourselves. Love starts with loving ourselves and being patient and kind with ourselves when we stumble. As I, as, I, as I might have said, you know, even Jesus, I said, I think that earlier, I said, even Jesus, right, had to go into the, into the hills to, to, to pray, right? And so this is, the, this is the process that we have here at CSL Midtown, tapping into these teachings, practicing them, getting better and better each day, uh, uh, iron sharpening, letting this iron of this wonderful teaching sharpen us and, and help us to be better. And also to tap into the love of forgiveness for ourselves, for family, for community, for others. So as we move into this, uh, this today's talk that's going to be given by the, the illustrious um, uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Morgan, we let's move into spiritual mind treatment to treat our hearts and our minds to for love for ourselves, for one another, for community, knowing that this process is an ongoing process, that is an ever-evolving process, and that we have to be gentle with ourselves the same way that we would want to, like I wanted uh, to be, and I was, more gentle with my uh, family member. Uh, I wasn't where I want to be, but um, I am still on the path, as are we all. So... Let us move into spiritual mind treatment to know the truth about who we are as dynamic individuals who can just live with our hearts ablaze for love, for love, for forgiveness, for unity, for kindness. We know that there's one presence, one power in the universe, and that presence and power is infinite, infinite intelligent life infinite intelligent goodness, infinite intelligent God, God in me, through me, as me, all around me, setting my heart ablaze with love, giving me the guidance to become better and better each day as I follow these spiritual truth principles, as I follow, as I use these tools such as spiritual mind treatment to treat my mind and my heart to know the truth that I can be, do, and have better and better each day. To let my mind and my heart know that we all can be, do, and have better and better, more and more loving connections and more and more loving experiences and experience triumph, even though it's difficult, even though it's hard, 
even though we don't know what's around the corner, even though we sometimes feel like there that 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 there's no clear path to love, to come to coming together, to community, to forgiveness, to healing. But we know that all we have to do is follow, follow these teachings, follow our hearts, follow the, the love of God, and a way will be made out of no way. So I just give thanks that similar to the way that this role family experience and a mayor, uh, an amazing coming together, reconciliation and, and healing, that anyone under the sound of my voice who needs to experience that with themselves, with a, a, a family member, it could be with a coworker, it could be with a neighbor, it could be with a child, a husband, a spouse, anyone. Let us know that as we continue to strive for love, for strive for oneness, strive for unity, strive for healing and reconciliation with hearts ablaze, it's available to us right here and right now. We turn the, our we we turn our the other cheek. We try again 70 times seven times, knowing that in the end we will be victorious. And for this we give thanks and we let it be so. And so it is. Amen. All right. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning. Dr. Harry Morgan Moses is the author of the popular book, It's So Easy When You Know How. And in second edition, his newest book is Obvious Power, The Secret of Habits and Attitudes. He's featured in the movies Living Luminaries, The Serious Business of Happiness, What is New Thought, and a new thought, a new you. Uh, Reverend Dr. Moses is the founder of the New Thought Center in San Diego, co-founder and past president of the affiliated New Thought Network, co-founder and senior minister of the New Thought Ministries of Oregon. Dr. Harry has been a keynote speaker for all major organizations of New Thought and over 11 years he served as a senior spiritual director uh, for the Centers for Spiritual Living. And Dr. Harry is a popular guest speaker and seminar leader throughout the New Thought Movement. And he's got a morning show called Coffee with Casper streaming live Tuesdays at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time um, on Facebook and YouTube. And it's available 24-7 after that. So Dr. Harry and his wife thrive in Topanga, California, and they enjoy their six grandchildren in addition to Casper. Welcome, Dr. Harry. Thank you. Just saw the uh, uh, one of the eight year olds in their uh, school play just yesterday. So, so yeah, we are certainly enjoying those grandkids. That's for sure. So, um, <clears throat> I think the title uh, today is "Home Again" or something like that. But it has to do with the season, and it has to do with also the events that we've been living through. Uh, and I know all of us have been living through events. Uh, hang on a second. I'll just make sure I get a timer on here so that I don't take up your time. Okay, there we go. Um, so here in the United States, uh, we had a major election. And uh, what we found is that there's a, still a major divide of the political opinion of which way things should go. Uh, and Behind that is the ideas of liberty and justice and equality and freedom and prosperity and the capacity uh, to move yourself forward through your consciousness, through your awareness of life. Uh, and all of those things still exist. So if it didn't go your way and it went the other way, uh, it's not the end of anything. It's just the beginning. And since you and I are light workers, we've come to understand, I, and I define light workers as people who know there is one power and that there's energy and matter, and this is scientifically already known, energy and matter are equal and interchangeable. Energy never dies, it changes form. So we go forward in energy. And now the change and the opportunity for us is to wake up re recognizing that as light workers, as people who know about the unity of all life, that we have a long way to go to end injustice, to an end prejudice, to end 
uh, violence, to end war. Uh, we're a planet that's, uh, that's shaky, and that's because we're going through a huge transformation. Uh, back when I was about 10 years old, I saw a play uh, that debuted here in the Los Angeles area called Hair. And uh, it was a very exciting new play. And from that play, there was a song that the Fifth Dimension did. And it was called, uh, This is the Dawning of the Age of Aquarius, a time when peace will guide the planet and love will guide the stars. And so we are a long way. So if we, if you, when I caught that at 10 years old, I knew that that was absolutely true. We, something within my intuitive, even as a young boy, knew that that was true, that we were involved in a transformation of the planet. And I would say, if you're here on this broadcast today, that you are of that same place, that you are someone who is wanting to make a contribution to the transformation of the planet. And so what came up for me at the, here's Casper, he wants to come say hello. Come on, come on. Come on up. There you go. Come on. All the way up. Come on. You're, you're out of the picture. There you go. This is Casper. You'll see you Tuesday. Okay. Now I'm busy. Um, so uh, this is, the, for me, uh, after election day, I, I all of a sudden knew that I'm not at all done. That my work as someone who is interested in healing, uplifting, and inspiring, and bringing forth more life, uh, anywhere I can and everywhere I can, that I've only just begun, that the, the work that we have to do is still here. Uh, the life force in me is beating. Uh, none of us know how to make a liver live or a kidney kid or a heartbeat beat. It's being done unto us. And so now we're working in, in this time of transformation, of releasing, purging, as it were, all of the ideas of competition, of uh, inequality, of, uh, again, prejudice and fear uh, and war and violence, all of those ideas are no longer valid. It's, it's not a good path. It's not, it's not taking humanity where it's toward any awakening. So what's happening is there's a purging going on, and sometimes that purging is not comfortable. Uh, and we need to know on the other side of that is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Now, there's something in the world, uh, in, if, if you've studied these principles, that says that we are all part of the race consciousness, meaning the entire, all of humanity around the world has a consciousness. And that consciousness is still stuck in the old paradigm. There is a new consciousness rising up, and that consciousness is the light workers. There are more light workers on the planet now than there's ever been before. There are more people aware of the oneness of all life than there've ever been before. And those people are finding a way to live their lives and to share out into the world a, a new possibility of a way of being in the world. And uh, just as our uh, lovely Maya has shared in her story, sometimes between our personal life and the big picture life of the race consciousness, there's a, there's a difference going on. And what we need to know is that we are part of the race consciousness and we are not trying to destroy the race consciousness. We are trying to uplift the race consciousness. So I'm not trying to separate from humanity. I'm trying to, to lay a path of, of peace and love where love will guide the planet and, and peace will steer the stars. I mean, whatever those lyrics are. That the point is that we are into a new age and we've only just begun. So your life and your presence and your awareness and your being willing to grow forward in your life spiritually is, is the pathway to this realization. And what we all want to know is we're headed there. Now, we happen to be in the holiday season, right? Uh, celebrate me home. And this is what the, the holidays typically in our country start at Thanksgiving. And I, many other countries have a Thanksgiving day, Dia de Gracias or a Thanksgiving day. 
and uh, they're not on the same dates as ours. But that that is the beginning of the holiday season. And Thanksgiving is about recognizing and blessing and appreciating all the things for which we are grateful. And then the next one that usually comes along, the next one this year is a little later than usual, closer to Christmas, is Hanukkah. And Hanukkah celebrates the faith, the faith that keeps the light when the darkness seems inevitable. The faith that keeps the light when the darkness seems inevitable. The winter solstice follows that, and that, that rejoices in the light emerging from the dark. We go on the 21st, which is the darkest day of the year, to every day starts bringing more light all the way up and through the summer solstice. So the solstice is about recognizing that the light hides, it, it moves into a phase, and then it comes back. And the light is returning in a new and more powerful way than ever before. And that's happening. And then we move into Christmas. And Christmas celebrates the new possibility in the human soul, that each one of us is capable of rising up into that place of consciousness where we unify so much with the Father, Mother, God, with the source of all life, that we become an avenue through which a healing, a blessing, uh, an extension of love is, is showing up in a more powerful way than we've ever known before. And that's what we should be celebrating on Christmas Day. Sure, there's all of the tradition around it. But the point is, there has been more than one saint, sage, mystic, and prophet who have been able to show us the way and, and point the path. And whether it's the Buddha or Jesus the Christ or uh, the, the wonderful Mahatma Gandhi who, who walked in peace to create a whole new reality in India, there have been so many way showers that have said that we can do this, that the possibility is within us to reach up, to just as faith reveres soul, breath of faith, that beautiful song, rise up, that we are all capable of rising up, rising up to the highest level of thinking, right? To the highest level of what, what is the way for me, through my individuality, the way I am living, what is the way for me to open to new possibilities? to new possibilities of good, to new possibilities of love, to new possibilities of light, to, to a more constant and consistent flow of good. There's a wonderful uh, affirmation by the great philosopher from the last century, Ernest Holmes, who said, good and more good is mine. There is no limit to the good that is mine. Everywhere I go, I see this good. I feel it. It crowds itself against me. It flows through me and multiplies itself around me. Now, can you, Johnny Coleman, the great teacher from Chicago, who was a way shower in showing uh, that the equality of all people uh, and, and taught for her, for her whole professional life uh, and was an extremely uh, committed and powerful woman, right? All of these souls have, have said, we can do this. We can rise up. We can rise up to a higher level of consciousness. And then after Christmas, we go into Kwanzaa. And Kwanzaa is a celebration of community. And wouldn't that be nice if we could all, as a human community, begin to realize that we are interdependent and that we belong with each other, and that we can be for each other, and we can find a pathway, even with different points of view, to bring forth a higher level of love into the world. How are you doing with that? How are you doing with being a higher level of love in the world? Because that's our assignment, and that's why we've only just begun to live. No matter what's happening in the world, the time for us to rise up time to, to rise to what I call upstairs thinking, to start working from a place of harmony, love, peace, joy, and belonging, and the recognition that there is always a solution. In an infinite field of possibilities, there must always be a solution, right? So we may not have found all the answers. We may not have found all the ways that we want to find 
peace and love and justice and equality and freedom and liberty, but we're working on it. And there are more light workers on the planet than there's ever been before. And we're all working on it. And we all have our own paths, the way that we like to make it work, the way that we think it should work. And that's okay. Every path will work together toward the greater good for all. Once we start recognizing there is one life, that life is the perfect life of God, that life is my life right here and right now, and that life is your life and everyone's life. And that life, there's a wonderful statement from St. Augustine. St. Augustine said, God loves each of us as if there was only one of us. Now, that's a very big God, and that's what Johnny Coleman would say. You know, how can I build this giant cathedral? How can I own a, a whole city block in Chicago and use it as a teaching center of these ideas? How can I create all of this? And the answer was, my God has to be bigger. I have to make a bigger God. I have to make room for the power of the one in me, as me, and through me to operate in my mind and in my body and in my experience, right? And that's our work daily. You know, Ernest said, you know, what makes a religious scientist, what makes a new thought practitioner is daily we meditate and daily we do spiritual mind treatment, which is simply affirmative prayer. We simply are knowing that all the challenges in my life are being met, that I'm moving to a higher level of good, and I'm allowing that higher level of good <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to open my mind, my body, and my experience that I may see with new eyes, that I may look forward. Because what happens after that? New Year's Day invites us to release the past while preparing for a brilliant new future. So this is, this is the thing. Your soul is not bound. No matter what has already happened, you're not bound. Your soul is not bound. Our choices, whether they are conscious or unconscious, make an impress upon the creative law, or what we call the law of the circle or the law of mind that every thought you think is doing something. And the more you, as Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of Christian Science said, the more we stand porter at the door of thought. And I love that idea. When I was growing up, my father had moved to New York City and they, they lived in apartment buildings that had a porter. And what the porter's job was at the front door of the building was to let those people in that belonged in and to keep those people out that don't belong in. So that's what Mary Baker Eddy said. She said, when stand porter at the door of thought. Stand porter at the door of thought. Let those thoughts in that you want in and change those thoughts that you don't want in. And say, well, I don't know how to change them because I'm stuck in this limitation. I'm stuck in this trap of my own creation and I don't know how to get out. Well, that's why there's a power for good, going back to Ernest Holmes. There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. You can use the power for good in the universe. And that's what we want to do. We want to start using this power. Every time we get stuck, we want to rise up knowing there is an answer. That doesn't mean your humanness is going to go away because we are the human divine. Right? Humanness has its animal nature. Humanness has its uh, uh, gut responses. Uh, humanness has reaction. And the divine doesn't do that. The divine doesn't all of a sudden react or become frightened or worry about the end of energy, the end of all creation. That's not going to happen. It knows there's always a solution. But in the creation of life, if we want to call on the other dimensions of life to help us, we have to know that we are the ones here. If we're going to change humanity for the better, then we must be the place that ha that happens. The place where the change needs to happen has to ask for the help to make it happen. So you have the right to pray to the saints, sages, mystics, prophets. Doesn't matter who you'd like to call into your experience. You can call in them all. You can call in the angels, the light workers of every dimension to help you to and 
directly to source, directly to source. Source is guiding, guarding, protecting, directing me, and leading me into the paths of perfect right action. But you see, in order to get our mind to go that way, we have to train the mind. Again, Dr. Holmes said, the untrained mind is a lot less powerful than the trained mind. So the more we know how to to go upstairs, to know that the highest good is unfolding in every level of our lives, to know that there's a power for good in the universe and it's working in my life today, to know that whatever the challenges are, there's a solution. And more likely than not, after that challenges, there'll be other challenges. And each time we're rising up with the capacity to reach higher into the in higher and deeper the highest god and the innermost god is one god to 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 reach higher and deeper into the truth into the truth of the love of the divine that god loves you as if there were only you here so the awakening of the christ the atman the buddha in every soul no matter what religious tradition they came from exists it's there to be had and to be used and we might need to focus on a light. Daily, we meditate. Daily, we do spiritual mind treatment. Paramahansa Yogananda said, uh, we should read a little, meditate more, and think about God all the time. So it's good to find inspirational material that you can uh, enjoy, like that wonderful video from Faith Rivera, Rise Up, Right. This is, this is how each artist, each soul is bringing their interpretation of how to bring that into their lives through their own experience. And that's what you and I need to do. How do I bring this idea of divine love, perfect harmony, perfect freedom, uh, the, the perfect answers to every challenge, that I have the perfect talents to move in, in any of the things that I choose to move in? And that I can use those talents in my life to prosper myself and to bring a benefit to everybody who touches the arena of my life. We have come in to a deep and profound idea. St. Augustine saw it a long time ago. God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. Casper, you need to lie down. <laughs> He's excited. Um, God loves each of us as if there's only one of us, that the awakening Christ, the awakening Buddha, the awakening Atman, uh, the high self and the Shema, it doesn't matter what name you give that consciousness of absolute unity in life. We have a right to draw it into our life. We have a right to step in that direction every day. And of course, every time we fall away, we need to come back. And that's why that's why we encourage a daily practice. Daily we meditate and daily we do spiritual mind treatment. Daily we recognize that God is one. I am one with that. Daily, whatever solutions I need, whatever they might look like from my point of view, I call those forward, knowing that there's possibilities beyond what I can see because I am one with the one, but to the degree that I have closed off myself from the source, from the source of all love, all light, all truth, all wisdom, then to that degree, coming from me, I am cut off. If I choose to open my mind, because the law of the circle simply means that which is coming from me is returning to me. So that which is coming from my conscious thought and my unconscious thought is returning to me as my experience. So if you want to know how you're doing, Look in the mirror and ask yourself, how am I doing, right? Am I on the right path? Am I, am I walking daily knowing that this day is a blessing? Am I walking daily, as my friend Mary Manon Morrissey used to say and still does say, today is a brand new baby day. What am I going to do with this brand new baby day? And what am I going to bring into this brand new baby day that I haven't seen before? You and I are at the place in our lives where we've only just begun. Now that we know there is one power 
And whether we've known it for 15 years or 20 years or five years or two months, doesn't matter. Because each day we're going to dwell on the I am. Good and more good is mine. There's no limit to the good that is mine. Everywhere I go, I see this good. I feel it. It crowds itself against me. It flows through me. It multiplies itself around me so that I am bringing forth into life a genuine blessing. And most of that genuine blessing that we're bringing into our life, we're not, you're not able to sit down and talk for 25 minutes with every teacher, with every way shower, with every light worker in the world. So the way that we do the practice is, is as Dalai Lama says, my religion is kindness. He may be a practicing Buddhist monk, but his religion is kindness. How can I bring into humanity a kindness and a peace and a poise and a balance that touches everywhere I go? It touches the folks that I know at the market. It touches the folks that I know at the dry cleaner. It touches the folks that I know at the bank. It touches the folks that help me uh, with my home. It touches, it, it, it touches everyone in your life. And as we begin to practice just that simple thing, today I will be more kind and more loving than I've ever been before. And if I fall short, just as Myra said, I'll forgive myself and I'll pick myself up and I'll go again. Right? Just like in, in, in baseball, I mean, if you strike out one time, doesn't matter. You're going to come up again and you'll have a chance to hit. And this is how it works in life. We, we, we go forward building a consciousness that eventually that consciousness, which is the sum total of everything we've ever thought, said, done. We've been clearing it out. We've been making room for a greater good in our lives. So I want you to know that who you are is something magnificent. What you've come to be aware of is the most important thing in the cosmos on earth at the moment. To know that there is one power. That power is the perfect life of the one. And that power is my life right here and right now. Now, how can I bring that perfect life into my experience in a greater and more profound way than ever before? Who you are is something magnificent. And again, I invite you to go in the light, as the light and with the light. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you and the pure light within you guide you on your way. Bye for now. All right. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Dr. Harry. That was awesome. So now it's time for us to give back for this beautiful enlightening talk that we had this morning and for all the the talks that we have every week that we bring to you um you can go to cslmidtown.org slash donate um that'll take you directly to the donation site you can set up a one-time donation or an ongoing donation as you see fit and this time of the year it's a time we've sent out a letter inviting you to contribute more if you see that um if you're being fed spiritually here we appreciate that and we appreciate your donations your donations are sustaining this organization and um we're doing well on that but going into 2025 we're looking at what we can do to bring a new minister in what that looks like um we're going to go into some things in february in our possibility opening that possibility and there's a process we're going to work through on that we've been talking about for a while but we're finally getting there um so on the screen you'll see our affirmation of prosperity you can say that with me and we can do um there'll be a qr code as well to scan for donations I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow and all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And now I've got a couple of announcements. Um, 
like I said, about the ongoing givingness. We're online. We will be back in person the first week in January. Um, and that will be a potluck at the Garden Hills Community Center. Uh, every Sunday, we've got a discussion group. They are going through the entire Science of Mind textbook um, week by week, each little bit that everybody gets through and having a great discussion on that. So if you're interested in that, more reading, more understanding daily and having an interaction with people on that, uh, that's Sunday at 10 before the service on our Zoom channel. You can get there by going to cslmidtown.org slash don't, or not slash don't, just cslmidtown.org, scrolling down, click on the Zoom link. And um, right after this, we're going to get on that same Zoom link with Dr. Harry and have a discussion. So if you're out there and you're not on Zoom, join us on Zoom for that discussion. It should be interesting given all that light work stuff that he was talking about. Uh, with that, we'll do our affirmation of life. Head on out. So if you will, I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for the understanding, this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. And next week, we've got Reverend Raymond Anderson. That should be very entertaining. So come back, see us then, and have a great week, everybody. There is a power for good in the universe greater than you are, and you can use it.